Chapter Two of the Palace in the Garden by Mrs. Molesworth. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Ilianthe. The scored out name. How new life reaps what the old life did so. Edwin Arnold. I was the naughty one of the family. I dare say you, whoever you are, that are going to read this, will have found this out already, and it was best to make it plain at the beginning. Tib and Gerald were really very good, at least they would have been if I had let them, but still, as I used often to say to them, as a sort of make-up for the troubles I got them into, it would have been rather dull work had we all three been extra good, and even the great thing that I have to write about, the thing that put it into my head to write at all, would never have come but for our being in a way naughty. That is very queer, isn't it? to think that good and nice things should sometimes come out of being naughty. I've often puzzled about it. I think it must be that there are different kinds of naughtiness, perfectly different, for nothing good could come out of real wicked naughtiness, telling lies or being cruel to each other or things like that, but the sort of naughtiness of just being mischievous and of being so bubbling over with the niceness of being alive that you can't keep quiet and remember about not knocking things over and tearing yourself, and the naughtiness of hating your lessons on a beautiful day when it's really too tempting out of doors. All these kinds of naughtiness, and lots of others, I could tell you, for I've thought so much about it. All these kinds are different, surely, and one can fancy good and nice things coming out of them without getting one's ideas muddled. That's one thing I'm going to be very particular about with my children. I'm going to explain to them well about the two kinds of being naughty, so that they won't get all into a puzzle about it. I think I even shall settle to have two kinds of words for them, for I do know, I'm sorry to say, what it is to be really naughty too. Just a few times in my life I can remember the dreadful feeling of real boiling anger at someone. I had it several times to Miss Evans, and once or twice to... No, I, I won't say. It's all so different now. And once I told what wasn't true, quite knowing all about it. But I never did it again. The horribleness of the feeling was too bad, and in that way my naughtiness did me good. Our plan for getting Miss Evans to help us to a holiday hadn't much chance, as you shall hear. When we got to the schoolroom, we found she hadn't come, though it was a quarter to ten, and she generally came at half-past nine. "'Everything seems going topsy-turvy today,' said I, seating myself on the high guard and swinging my feet about. It was a very dangerous seat, as the guard was anything but steady, and if it toppled over, there was no saying but that you might be landed in the middle of the fire. "'Miss Evans late?' and us going away to a place we never heard of before. It's almost as nice as if the sun had forgotten to get up. What fun that would be! I don't think that would be fun at all, said Gerald. I'd much rather he forget to go to bed some night. Which would you rather, Tib? But Tib wasn't listening. She was pressing her face against the window, her thoughts intent upon primroses again. Hush, she said. I'm sure I heard him. He can't be far off yet or else it's another man. Listen. And as she held up her finger, there came softly through the distance again the all a-growing, all a-blowing. I wonder why these things seem so much prettier far off, said Tib thoughtfully. But just then the cry came again, and this time unmistakably nearer. Off darted Tib. I will try to get Fanny to catch him, she said, and in five minutes she was back again in triumph. Fanny wasn't to be found, of course, she said, but that good Liddy poked up the little page boy. He's new, so he hasn't learnt to be impudent yet, and sent him down the street. We shall have the primroses directly. Oh, I say, Gussie, and Gerald, and Tib flung herself down on the hearth rug and rolled herself over as if she were on a lawn of beautiful, fresh grass. Just fancy if we were in the country and could gather primroses for ourselves, as many as ever we wanted. Wouldn't it be lovely? Perhaps we may. Perhaps they won't be over when we go to that place, said Gerald. I wonder when exactly we shall go, I said, 
and then our thoughts all returned to rosebuds and what our grandfather had said about it i wonder why he doesn't want us to make friends with any of the neighbours i said i think it's rather crabby of him there may be some nice children there and we never have any playfellows i suppose he's got some reason for it said tib perhaps the people who live there are all very common you know grandpapa is right to be particular about us i don't think it is that i think he has some other reason tib do you know i exclaimed as a curious idea flashed across my mind i have an idea that but i was interrupted before i could say more by the entrance of old liddy bringing the primroses they were not very big bunches but they were very sweet and fresh and we all sniffed at them in a way that must have astonished the poor things nurse smiled at us i'd like to see you gathering them for yourselves my dears she said well we shall perhaps if we go to the country so soon do you know that place where we're going to liddy asked tib she shook her head she had come to us from mamma's family and she didn't know much about the ansdells no miss tib i never heard of it till your grandpapa told me last night about getting you ready and that reminds me bland told me just now that his master forgot to say miss evans wouldn't be coming to-day miss evans not coming to-day we all three exclaimed in the greatest astonishment for it must be confessed miss evans was the most exact person possible is she never coming any more liddy nay my dear how should i know i only heard what bland said miss evans isn't coming with us to the country master said but he's going to get another said gerald will she be just exactly the same will she have a big freckle on her cheek and will she nip up her mouth the same do you think nursey we all burst out laughing at poor gerald it would quite spoil rosebuds to have the big freckle there said tib but nursey do you know grandpapa says we're not to make any friends there and not to know anybody this time liddy nodded her head i know my dears well it can't be helped it'll be no duller for you there than at ansdell friars anyway and it's a beautiful country for walks cook says she comes from somewhere that way but why does grandpapa not want us to know anybody there do you know nursey does cook know perhaps liddy looked uncomfortable my dears there may be reasons for many things that you're too young to understand she said if your grandpapa had wanted to give his reasons to you he'd have done so himself and if he didn't wish to give you any it would ill become me to be telling you over any fancies or chatter i might hear about master's affairs tib's eyes grew very round i do believe there's a mystery she said oh how beautiful nursey i'm sure you know something what fun it would be if there was really a mystery and if we were to find it out gussie do listen but i wouldn't listen just that minute the thought which had been put out of my mind by nurse coming in with the primroses had come back again wait a minute tib i said i've got an idea i'm only going down to the library to fetch a book i may go as miss evans isn't coming and off i flew the library was not a large room indeed it was a good deal smaller than grandpapa's study but it held a great many books it was nothing but books for there were shelves all round it packed as close as they could hold in one corner were all the books that grandpapa allowed us to read he had shown them to us himself and simply told us we might read any of them we liked provided we always put them back again in their places but that we mustn't ever take any other books without asking his leave that was one thing grandpapa was very nice about though he was so cold and strict he always trusted us and never doubted our words i'm sure that is the best way to make children quite truthful except that one time i've told you of i don't remember any of us telling a story it didn't seem to come into our heads to do so we had been with grandpapa ever since we could remember and he had always been the same we had never known what it was to be loved or petted except by liddy for both papa and mamma had died of a fever in spain and we had been sent home with old nurse i suppose i should have explained this at the beginning but it doesn't matter well i ran down to the library and went straight to our own corner they were funny-looking books mostly rather shabby for they had been children's books for two and some of them for three generations 
It took me a little while to find the one I was in search of. Indeed, I wasn't quite sure which it was, and I had to take out several and open them to see the page at the beginning before I got the right one. It was a small book. The name of it was Ornaments Discovered, and on the first leaf was written the name of the person it had belonged to. There were two names, but the first had been so scored through that one could only distinguish the first letter of it, which was R, and the second name was our own name, and Grandpapa's name, Ansdell, and lower down on the page was the date, and the name of a place just above it. But this name also had been scored through, only not so blackly as the other, so that it was still easy to make out that it was that of the house we were going to live at, Rosebuds. I remembered it quite well now. I had often puzzled over the writing in this book, and though I had never made out the name before Ansdell, I remembered having read that the other was Rosebuds. I understood now a sort of feeling I had had when Grandpapa had told us the name that morning, that I had heard it before, or as it turned out, seen it before. I rushed up the stairs with the little red book in my hand. Tib, I said, looking and feeling very excited, just look at this. Up jumped Tib. She had been down on the floor arranging the primroses in some little glasses that we always kept on the mantelpiece for any flowers that came our way. Liddy had left the room, and Gerald had gone with her. We leant over the book together. You see, I said, pointing to the word above the date. Yes, said Tib, it's certainly rosebuds. I suppose Grandpapa had it when he was a little boy there. Oh, you stupid, I exclaimed. You're always wanting to make up wonderful stories of adventures and mysteries, and now when I've found you a real mystery, already made, you won't see it. If it had just been Grandpapa's book, what would he have scored the name out for? Besides, you know very well that his name is Gerald, like Papa and Gerald, and this name begins with a R. Tib had taken the book in her own hands by this time, and was peering at it. "'You may call me stupid if you like,' she said, "'but I found out something else. "'The name is Regina, my second name, "'for Tib's whole name was Mercedes Regina, "'Mercedes Regina Ansdell. "'Isn't that an awfully grand name for a little girl? "'She was a little girl then. "'I seized the book in my turn. "'Sure enough, now that Tib had put the idea into my head, "'it seemed quite plain.' Even through the very thick crossing out, one could see the confused shapes of the word, Regina. "'You're right, Gussie,' said Tib. "'There is a mystery. You remember that time that Grandpapa was grumbling at my name, like he did this morning, and I said, "'Mightn't I be called by my second name? How he snapped out. No, certainly not. It frightened me so, I remember. There must have been somebody called Regina Ansdell.' that he didn't like, or he was angry with, or something. Oh, how I do wonder who she was, and why he has never told us about her. We might ask Nurse, I said. I'm sure she knows something, for you see, this Regina Ansdell must have lived at Rosebuds, and it's something about there that Liddy has heard, and won't tell us, and I shouldn't wonder if it has to do with Grandpapa's not wanting us to know any of the people there. "'What can it be?' said Tib, her eyes growing bigger and rounder. "'There can't surely be anyone shut up there, a mysterious lady called Regina. "'Oh, no, that can't be it, for Grandpapa would never take us there if there were. "'Besides, though he's rather frightening and strict, Grandpapa's not bad and wicked.' "'The Queen wouldn't let him be in the Parliament if he were,' said I. "'At least, I suppose not. "'It's good of him to have us all living with him.' "'Nursey says it is. "'I don't think we've got any money of our own. "'Well, we're his grandchildren, "'and it isn't our fault that Papa and Mamma died,' I said. "'I don't think that's so very good of him. "'Still, he is good to us in some ways, I know.' "'Tib was still staring at the book. "'I don't think it's any use asking Nurse,' she said. "'If she does know anything, she doesn't want to tell us. "'And it's no use telling Gerald. "'He's too little. "'If we told him not to speak of it,' He'd very likely get red the first time Grandpapa looked at him, like that day you filled the hood of Miss Evans's waterproof with peas, and he kept staring at it all the time of our lessons till she found out there was something the matter. 
no said i it's better not to tell him of course tib we mustn't do anything naughty it would be naughty to go prying into grandpapa's secrets if he has any but what we've found out hasn't been with prying it's impossible not to wonder a little about it and it's grandpapa's own fault for telling us so sharply not to know anybody or speak to anybody at rosebuds of course we'll obey him but we can't help our minds wondering they're made to wonder tip considered for a while then her face cleared i'll tell you what we can do gussie she said we can turn it into a play we can't leave off wondering as you know but we can mix up our wondering with fancy and make up a plan of how it all was it will be very interesting for we shall know there is something real and yet we can make it more wonderful than anything real could be now that everything's grown so plain and and i don't know the word the opposite of poetry and fairy stories i mean in the world we must think about it gussie we might make it an ancient times story or an ogre story or yes i said we'll we'll think about it i did not want to disappoint tib and i thought in a way it was rather a good idea but i'm not so fond of fancying or pretending as tib i like real things and the idea of a real secret or mystery had taken hold of my mind and i wanted to find out about it still the making of a play of it wasn't a bad idea as tib said it would be more interesting than an altogether make-up play we didn't say anything about the name in the book to liddy it was no use worrying the poor old thing by teasing her about what she thought would be wrong to tell even if it had not anything to do with our mystery it would have been wrong and unkind of us and we said nothing to gerald either and indeed for some days we did not think or speak much about our discovery even to each other we were so very much taken up about the real preparing to go away it was much more of a nice bustle and fuss than it had ever been to go to ansdell friars there everything was left from year to year just as we had always had it the rooms had all we needed and there was very little besides our clothes to pack up and take but for going to rosebuds it was quite different none of the servants had ever been there and they were all in a to-do about it especially as only about half of them were to go and the other half were cross at being sent away and kept telling the others they'd be sure to find everything wrong there nurse was the only one who was really pleased to go and i'm sure dear old thing it was more for our sakes than her own it'll be a real change for them poor dears she kept saying and this gave her patience to bear all our teasing and the servants grumbling what a time she had of it to be sure from gerald's nursey may i take all my horses if i leave sultan in the cupboard won't the mouses and butterflies eat him gerald always called moths butterflies will there be any wheelbarrows like at ansdell's to fanny's suggestion that there'd be no nursery tea service there a house that nobody's been in for years and years everything fell on liddy and you see she dared not ask grandpapa all sorts of things as if he'd been a lady he was even rather cross when she went trembling one day to ask if there were shops anywhere near rosebuds or if she must plan to take everything we could want for all the summer shops said grandpapa i heard him for liddy had caught him on his way downstairs one morning and i was standing just inside the schoolroom doorway of course there are shops near enough five miles off or so i'm not going to take you to the middle of africa i dare say there are shops enough in the village for common things mrs munt will tell you all that no need to worry me about it mrs munt i had never heard that name before i pricked up my ears but i was dreadfully afraid that liddy would be too frightened to ask any more to my satisfaction i heard her meek old voice again and who may mrs munt be sir if you please at this grandpapa stopped short and looked at her i couldn't see him but i felt him stop short and look at her poor liddy upon my soul he said then some reflection seemed to strike him for his next words were more amiable mrs munt is the housekeeper at rosebuds she's been there ever since i can remember you didn't suppose i was going to trust to that mary ann's cooking mary ann was the kitchen-maid she was coming with us but not the cook who was leaving to be married 
Mrs. Munt is, or used to be, a very good cook, and a very good sort of person altogether. Oh, thank you, sir, said Liddy very heartily. Mrs. Munt was a great relief to her mind, for the idea of Mary Ann's cooking, on the days that Master came down to Rosebud's, had been weighing on it. To me, the idea of Mrs. Munt brought back the thought of the mystery. If she had been there as long as Grandpapa could remember, what must she not know? I flew off to Tib with the news, but she did not receive it with much interest. "'An old cook,' she said disdainfully. "'Why, that would spoil it all. It wouldn't matter so much for an ogre story, if we could fancy her a witch, but for an ancient times one, it would never do.' "'Oh, bother!' I exclaimed. "'I don't want pretending. I want to know about it, really. "'If you only wanted make-ups, you can always get things that will do for them. "'I'm sure Miss Evans would have been a beautiful witch. "'Oh, Tib, aren't you glad she isn't coming any more?' "'For Miss Evans had left off coming altogether. "'She was going to begin a school. "'How we pitied the scholars, "'and had asked Grandpapa to let her off at once.' She came to say good-bye to us, and gave us each a present of a book, and to our surprise there were tears in her eyes when she kissed us. People are really very queer in this world. They never seem to care for things till they know they are not going to have them any more. We all felt rather ashamed that we couldn't cry too, and Tib said she was afraid we must have very little feeling, which made Gerald and me quite unhappy for a while. All the same, we weren't at all in a hurry to hear of the new Miss Evans. End of chapter 2